So I want to ask you a question. I've entitled this Jesus Knows. And I want to try to show the importance of what Jesus knows and why it's important to us and understanding. So what does it take? I asked some questions here at the beginning. What does it take to be in the know? And what is and how impactful is it to you for the people that you know? If you know someone and they know you, how does that impact your life? And how sure can be we be of what we know? And we recognize that nobody knows it all, and none of us can keep everything together. At times, though, we feel like nobody knows us, though, you know, or understands us. And knowing yourself is, is very important, who you are, how you function, have an understanding of that, and having a reality check in that regard. However, in spite of what we think or feel that we know, uh, we're asking the question of what does Jesus know that would be helpful to all of us. And because he is in the know, and our lives take on an insurance that comes from knowing who he is, what he is, and what it is, and who it is that Jesus knows as well. So those are the questions. What does Jesus know? Who does he know? And what can we know? And I'm, I'm focusing on Second Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, because here you have an apostle talking about our lives, the hopes that we have, and that's all well and good if, in one sense, it, it can be rather fanciful, but the reality is that Peter knows someone who knows something, and he's trying to express that to us. So I want to read this, uh, verses 1 through 11, so we can see what he's talking about, and then we're going to come back on talking about what Jesus knows. So he says here, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Though these, uh, Through these, though, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, I make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and self-control perseverance and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. This, this whole process. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten what he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fail, and you will receive the rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A lot of, a lot of empty promises, if there's no reality to this. But it's also very encouraging. So when we look at knowing and understanding, Peter's telling us, through scripture, what he knows now, and who he knows. And he's, he's saying, he, he's writing this because he is inspired by God, he has walked with Jesus, he's a disciple of Jesus, he's a student of Jesus, and he is telling us what his professor, what his master has told him. So, let's go back and see for a moment, we're, we're talking about Jesus, so let's see what Jesus knows and who he knows. Now, why this is important is because oftentimes we have the feeling that we have to know everything. We got to know it all in order for it to, to be able to have what, we, what God wants us to have in life or just 
of living in this life. You appear to think that you have to have it all. So who is it? What does he know? So we're going to go back to John chapter 1. Because this is speaking here now. John is writing, and he's telling us about the professor. I'm going to call him the professor, because it's kind of like a college class. It's also the master of the rabbi. So who is it, and how much do they know? Now, in order to help us to understand this a little bit better, recently when we traveled to Belize and we went to the Mayan ruins and all of that, as a kid growing up, um, I heard, and the answer to the question this question was, who discovered America? Columbus. Col Christopher Columbus discovered America. So when I'm in the Mayan ruins, which is long before Christopher Columbus, and here is this city, not, not a village, it's a city, 400,000 people. They've un unearthed a little bit of that. Uh, there's a lot of folk there, and they have a lot of talent. They, you know, they've got astronomy, they're, they're doing all kinds of things, pretty intelligent. But so you kind of go back in a ways. So we're going to go back. And here in John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. So we're establishing the word. And you and I, for, for sake of, of time, we know who the word is. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, he was with God in the beginning. Now, if you're looking for somebody that's going to be in the know, if you're going to have primary evidence, it's those that are closest, like an eyewitness. They're the ones that can testify to the things that actually happen. So, through him, though, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men, and light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So, in this scripture here, and then it goes on to tell us in verse 14, and this is important, then speaking of the word, verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So here, here are the responses to what Jesus knows. Jesus knows God. Now that's a pretty primary source. Jesus knows, as we would call, the Heavenly Father. Jesus, as God has revealed this, is both fully human and fully divine. Jesus knows the universe. He knows all creation. Verse 14 will help us understand that he knows and understands mankind because he was made like all of us. So he knows humanity. And he also knows grace and truth. This is some of the things that Jesus knows. He also knew the apostle Peter. And he made himself known to Peter and Peter knew him. John talks about, you know, they had three and a half years of ministry. They're walking. They knew that. Therefore, Peter can talk about what he has come to know because of Jesus. Now, what does Jesus say about what he knows? In Matthew 11, verse 27, he tells us that only he reveals the Father. The Father reveals him. No man has seen God, but he has. And he knows the Father. So, the question that I asked earlier is not true when I said, is there anybody who knows it all? And the answer to that, yes, there is one. That is Jesus. He knows it all. He knows the beginning of history. He knows the end of history. And he knows the present. Now, we oftentimes have difficulty. And when you get in the legal system, you're going to have real difficulty finding what is truth because you don't always let truth in because the way that it's obtained, it may, quote, be obtained illegally. And therefore, even though it's true, it's dismissed from the truth. So when we think about truth for all of us, what is truth? We live in a world where we say there is no absolute truth. Feeling the blues today? 
or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life or need spiritual advice? The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us every week at the times listed on your screen.